Welcome to John Tina Fiera's Carpe Diem TV, where John Tina Fiera takes you on a special visit to the historically romantic city of Florence, Italy, in the land of Tuscany, bringing Europe to the USA and the USA to Europe. Historically one of the most influential cities of political and cultural import, Florence is beautifully nestled in a gentle valley amongst the Sanisi Clavi Hills along the banks of the Arno River. And on the edge of Florence's historic center lies the beautiful Four Seasons Hotel Firenze, now a living museum of art and history following a seven-year restoration of a 15th century palazzo. And in this program, you will also visit the 13th century pharmacy of Santa Maria Novella, which still preserves its unaltered appearance and continues to perpetuate its herbal remedies in the same tradition of its founding fathers nearly 800 years ago. Florence was but a small village in 59 BC when the Romans under Julius Caesar began transforming it into what was originally intended to be a quiet retirement settlement for his veteran soldiers. And to that end, it was named Florentia, meaning the flourishing. Because of its position between Rome and the north and its fertile areas along the Arno River, the city of Florence grew in prominence over the centuries becoming what was to be the heart and soul of the Renaissance that eventually spread throughout all of Europe. Today, Florence is the name of not only the city of Florence, but it is also the name of one of the ten provinces of the central Italian region known as Tuscany. Florence, once the capital of the Kingdom of Italy, is now the capital and most populous city of all of Tuscany, and it is also the capital of the province of Florence. The magical city of Florence is truly a wonder, for it has been the birthplace or chosen residence of so many culturally important figures in our world, such as Filippo Brunelleschi, Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Galileo, and so many more. And nowhere else on earth can you find such influences so alive today and in your grasp, as it is when you walk through the historic center of Florence. The beauty and historical splendor preserved in this city can be felt with every step from the narrow cobblestone streets to the red tiled roofs to the magnificent architecture, artwork and statues that can be found on every corner. And not even the most callous soul can resist the Florentine magic of being transcended through time, experiencing what it must have been like to have walked along the very same streets and lived amongst the very same individuals who continue to shape our lives today, even as we speak. Just at the edge of the historic center of the city of Florence is the Four Seasons Hotel Forenza. a living museum of art history set within the walled tranquility of Florence's largest private garden. It is here that its guests are able to experience firsthand original 15th to 19th century works of art in their original context and which have been restored to their original vivid detail and beauty. Comprised of two Renaissance palaces painstakingly restored to the smallest detail but yet modernized to provide every conceivable amenity and convenience the Four Seasons Hotel Forenza is a rare combination of historic opulence and modern luxury. Here one can relax and rejuvenate the mind, soul and body amidst the Renaissance beauty that surrounds you. Whether it be enjoying the morning poolside or toning things up in the two-level exercise center, 
you can be assured that your every need will be taken care of. And just as unique as the art and sculpture you find throughout, so is the two-storied spa building, wherein one can enjoy the benefits and magical effects of the all-natural herbal remedies supplied by one of the world's oldest all-natural herbal pharmacies that dates back to the 13th century, the Officina Profumo, Pharmaceutica di Santa Maria Novella in Florence. And now the Il Palagio. Once the Palazzo's stable block, the hotel's main restaurant retains its original antique vaulted ceiling and numerous columns creating an impressive dining area experience, accented with colors of pale silver and jade. It is here that executive chef Vito Molica, previously from the Four Seasons Milano and Seven Years Four Seasons Prague, brings forth the unique identity of Tuscany through its traditional cuisine based on seasonal ingredients and fresh flavors. Here with Giantina today is Mr. Molica, who will now show you how to prepare a most special dish of risotto. Welcome, nice to have you here. Thank you very much. Very nice to be here. Thank you to you. <laughs> um, it's a pleasure. Right. So I'm going to cook something for you. Uh, now we have a uh, good season of mushroom. The mushroom that we have is the, the porcini. Oh, that's a big one. That's beautiful, they're yes. very nice. And we have uh, every day they are coming from Garfagnana, which is not so far from Florence. Okay. They grow here in the area? Yeah, in the area. It's uh, like 80 kilometers from yeah. here. Oh, wow. So what I'm going to prepare today is something very simple and prepared in a light way. I will do a risotto together with porcini. And then I will just add some uh, olive oil, butter and parmigiano. So the important thing is just to follow the steps. The mushroom will be inside the oil and garlic. And the risotto I will cook just with the plain water. In order that the mushroom will give a good flavor to it. Let's start. Yes. So I just put some water here with a little bit of salt, semi like sale per fore. And this I will make it just a little bit warm, not too hot because if not the garlic will become too aggressive. So like this will be a nice aroma. Okay, like this you can see it's just boil a little bit. So I just put a bit of salt in here. Then I make very hot the rice. And I add a little bit of butter. I try to preserve the flavor of what we put inside. That is one of the reasons why I will not put any white wine inside and also will use just plain water. Plain water is the best. It's the best. It's the best because you get a pure flavor of the ingredient that you put. So I will put the like this. I put a bit of salt and some black pepper. It's from this area? All products from the area. We use the olive oil, which is from this area. Okay. 
The butter is coming as well from Garfagnana. We have a lovely cow in, the, in this region. The mushroom is from Tiseria. The only is the rice is coming from Piedmont. In Italy we have Piedmont, Lombardia and Veneto, which are producing the best rice for risotto. So all the rest of the combination is all local. So now we're going to add the mushroom inside. So we start to give a good flavor to the rice. I take a little bit of this water and I will add. So as you can see the starch of the rice is starting to become very creamy. Okay now let me try again the rice but it look like if it's ready. It's perfect. You just need to add a little bit more salt. When the rice is cooked, we have to remove from the fire. And we have to put it here, where there is no more fire on the bottom. The reason why is because we're going to add some cold butter that will help to make it the rice creamy. So we're going to blend it so fast. This is the process then the rice has, it's called the mantecazione. So we have to mix it, the butter, together with some extra virgin olive oil. And together with the starch, it will become very creamy, as you can see. When it's creamy and the uh, butter is already going, we're gonna add some parmigiano. So, we add some uh, parsley. Look how it's nice and creamy. Now let me try. It's perfect. Little black pepper. And it's ready to be plated. Okay, you can add this one. Look how beautiful and creamy it is that. Eh? Now I'm going to add just a few chips for decoration. And this is the risotto with the more porcini mushroom. Perfetto. You just have it at the right time. This is my risotto okay. with the porcini. Yes. Local porcini as I mentioned before. And uh, just made it with the butter, parmigiano and olive oil. Okay. Please let I me know. Oh, oh grazie. <laughs> what is the most important thing to make a risotto a tasting this course? Oh, the most important thing is the quality of the rice. Quality Always of the select rice. a very good quality of the rice. And when you are cooking, will not broken this little uh, uh, rice grain, you know. Okay. And then the, follow the right process of cooking. Toasted first, cooking without too much water or too much bouillon. Right. And then using always great ingredient. In this case, we have great porcini, great quality of butter, and great quality of parmigiano. If you use a this quality of ingredient you cannot make something bad so that's why that's is the reason uh, we try to make it the best result and the best pasta in this way of course we will be very proud to have you oh grazie because, uh, it's tasting excellent thank you very much In the heart of Florence is the Basilica of Santa Maria Novella, home of the Dominican order that established itself in Florence in the early 13th century, and which cultivated medicinal herbs within the monastery walls for the convent's infirmary. And thus, the origins of the only Florentine monastery pharmacy that still today preserves unaltered its original appearance, the Officino Profumo de Santa Maria Novella. Thank you. 
dedicated to the quality and preservation of its original formulas and successful remedies of centuries gone past, you will meet Mr. Gianluca Foa, Commercial Director, and Mr. Eugenio Alfandri, Senior Director of the Officina Profumo de Santa Maria Novella. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Buongiorno. Thank you very much for welcoming. Thank you. This is the ingresso di Santa Maria Novella dal 1848. I clienti entrano da questa porta. E questa è la sala, la prima sala di vendita della Santa Maria Novella. Questa è la chapel, un old chapel from the church, it's wonderful. Questa è la vecchia farmacia e qui comincia un po' la storia della Santa Maria Novella. Nel 1221 i frati domenicani chiesero alla città di Firenze un appezzamento di terreno per costruire il loro convento e da qui è sorto il convento dei Domenicani che era fuori delle mura di Firenze infatti c'era una chiesetta che si chiamava Santa Maria nelle Vigne dove ora c'è la cattedrale questa è dal 1612 la farmacia di Santa Maria Novella This is a wonderful room and tell me something about the ceilings because they are wonderful. Sì, in effetti questi sono i mobili del 1600 che poi nel 1700 furono cambiati. Lo stesso il soffitto nel 1700 fu fatto queste questi stucchi con queste specie di affreschi. E da allora non è stato più restaurato, infatti necessita forse di un restauro che verrà fatto in questi anni. E questa è la sala dei, dei quadri dei direttori, infatti il primo tra gli artisti è stato diciamo, il, il direttore che ha iniziato nel 1612 l'attività dell'officina profumo farmaceutica di Santa Maravella. Importante è questo Tommaso Valori. Poi nel 1848, sconsacrando la chiesa, la cappella San Nicolò, fu fatta questa sala di vendita. Gli affreschi simboleggiano i quattro continenti e chiaramente se si pensa che era un convento era benedistica anche i mobili, le statue eccetera. And this, this looks so impressive to me. Uh, can you tell me something about the wonderful pictures and all these nice vases here? Eh sì, infatti i vasi furono commissionati nel 1800 dai frati alle manifatture di Monterupo per abbellire questa sala. Gli originali però sono nelle teche, queste sono riproduzioni. I quadri sono dei direttori e qui si può capire come funziona il passaggio tra i religiosi e i laici. Infatti nel 1868 furono soppressi gli ordini religiosi e quindi dai laici, l'ultimo direttore sono io e spero di andare il più tardi possibile lì perché andiamo dopo morte. E Eugenio, tell me, what is the difference between your marketing plan and other companies in the world? Eh, ad esempio noi produciamo tutto internamente e anche le coltivazioni delle erbe officinali. Nella stessa maniera la distribuzione viene fatta da 50 negozi in monomarca e da 100 corna. Andare nei grandi magazzini avrebbe portato un incremento di fatturato, però non avrebbe potuto essere controllato come stiamo controllando adesso l'azienda, cioè pretendiamo che il personale addetto alle vendite abbia fatto stage presso di noi. In uh, 2012, uh, Santa Maria Novella will celebrate the 400-year anniversary. Are you planning to commemorate this? 
Sì, Events. abbiamo previsto di fare una bellissima festa il 21 di dicembre del 2012, se non finisce il mondo prima, e i due profumi festeggeranno questo evento. Uno si chiama porcellana, alla bottiglia di porcellana e al tappo di porcellana, l'altro si chiama ottone e al tappo in ottone. Chiaramente porcellana ha una nota più dolce, più femminile, ottone è più maschile. Il numero è limitato perché saranno 2012 pezzi, qual è l'anno 2012, e cesserà di essere prodotto il 21 di dicembre del 2012. Una parte dei ricavati eh, della vendita di questi due profumi andrà per un'opera di pubblica utilità che dirò l'anno prossimo che cosa faremo. Eugenio, thank you very much for the wonderful tour in Santa Maria Novella. Sì, sono presente. Thank you. I am welcome to the Officina Profumo Farmaceutica di Santa Maria Novella. I am introducing you our soap production process and especially our iris soap. Uh, uh, in this first phase we uh, introduce in this tank our raw materials which are in this case the iris absolute essence and the uh, soap flakes and the cow meal, real cow meal, no surrogates, no padwars. Uh, these ingredients are pasted in this tank here and then they go in this other machinery here which creates slices of soap. So this compound passes through uh, in this machinery which creates slices of soap. So at this stage, the slices of soap pass from that machinery there, in this machinery here, to be pressed and compact in bar of soaps. The bar of soaps comes out for, from that machinery there uh, in this form because there is a matrix which gives the shape that you want to have uh, uh, about this soap. And that go to the cutting of the soap. Uh, at this end, the, soap, the bar of soaps are cut at the size that we want to reach and printed with our logo at 18 degrees below zero. Then uh, there is a first control of quality and the soaps are stuck in this closet in here. This is the uh, end of the soap line where there is the control of quality and then there is a next step where we, our soap are left to dry. So now the soap is done, but it's still fresh for us. I show you, cutting one soap, one bar of soap, you see how much is still creamy. And the result that we want to, re to reach at the end is this one, not that one. So we need to rest and age the soap for at least one month in this ventilated closet. During this month, uh, the uh, water present in the ingredients evaporates in this ventilated clapboard up to the uh, soap is completely dry and solid and compact. One of the most important aspects of our company is to combine the most modern machineries together with the ancient tradition like the handwork. It's very important to us to, for example, wrap our soap by hand, each piece one by one since it's really related with the control of quality. In this case, you can see uh, that we wrap by hand every single soap and package, and so our control of quality is not made random, like industrial chain, but piece by piece. And this uh, uh, really appreciated by our customers, which are uh, keen to receive something which is like a dedicated line and something really handmade for them. We are now in our liquor department store 
Uh, the most important product of this line, belonging to this line, is called Alkermes. Alkermes comes from an Arabia word called Kermits, which means uh, scarlet, red. This beautiful color is given by the uh, shell crush of the ladybugs. Uh, our company is faithful to its recipe of 7040. This ingredient uh, was used especially during the Renaissance uh, to paint the textile, especially in Venice and in Florence. So these are the dehydrated shell of the ladybugs which we collect in Mexico because the only part in the world where they are living is on the cactus. So then the shells are crushed by us and become uh, red like that. This powder is very deep red, it's beautiful, uh, it looks like velvet in a sense. Now you see that how this water becomes right away red of a very beautiful deep red and this was used to paint the textile. My colleague has given to me uh, some noce moscata uh, which together the cloves and the cinnamon uh, is the ingredient of our alkermes normally used now in pastry and is the uh, basic ingredient of a very famous cake here in Florence called Zuppa Inglese, prepared by the Florentines for the wealthy English family which were used to spend their vacation at the last of the 19th century here in Florence.